Hello, hello everyone, Phoenix61 here with some skull and bones shenanigans for you tonight, right? So, we are in the maxed out, you know, maxed level Brigantine, and we are doing a torpedo build with this. Um, I think this is probably, you know, if you're if you're interested in fighting with torpedoes to kind of get the most out of them, I, I probably would recommend the Brigantine. Just because once you get this ship upgraded, there are some additional perks that revolve around flooding weapons. So I would think this would be the way to go. Um, the other thing too, like just the maneuverability of it helps out a lot. You're, what you want to do a lot with this is, you know, be able to like, you know, do a lot of turning to get, you know, your front torps off, your side torps off, your back torps off, right? Like, so just like being able to maneuver is pretty helpful. Torpedoes re do reload pretty quickly, right? And it and they send all, everything all at once, which is really, really nice. Um, but yeah, so here we are fighting the season three, the upper level, the, the level 16 boss, right? And I'm a few minutes in and I've been using just torpedoes and then um, I'm also using the, um, the new mortar from this season that causes taunt. I think that's kind of a, you know, if you're fighting the big boys like this, right? You, you pretty much, you pretty much need to trigger taunt on people and it works really well for um, PvP as well if you're playing around in that space at all but yeah without triggering taunt on this boss you're gonna take quite a bit of damage it's gonna be a little bit more challenging um, I think for some of the other portions of the, this video I was using other weapons like Leopold 3 for the ox weapon since it's a mortar that does trigger that does do a lot of flood damage as well so that's probably a pretty good idea but um, yeah, we won't do the whole boss that you know you could see how quickly we were going through their health So it would take us you know, it's gonna take a while right, but these uh, lower level enemies You know he was a level 9 pirate right and we make pretty short work of him And so I think that's where this uh, this build is gonna shine the most It's sort of your just tooling around town every day driver kind of build or you know like kind of play style um, It works really well um, It also works really really good for the defend missions. I was actually kind of surprised and I was actually having quite a bit of fun with this build doing a defend mission just because the torpedoes were in fact working pretty pretty good. Um, so you'll see here we can make pretty short work of all these level 12 enemies and you know how it goes we're at level you know wave 4 or 5 so wave 5 is about to start here and sometimes with these defends you can get a little bit overwhelmed if you don't have a you know a good build and a good strategy going into these. Um, and there can just be too many enemies and we didn't have that problem at all with this build So I think this is this was an area where I had some success and it was definitely fun and I liked using the torpedoes, you know um, But yeah, as far as like my like, you know My best builds or whatever, you know, like or the things that I want to go and tackle the most difficult um, You know challenges in the game right now. I probably still am not quite sold on doing a torpedo build for those things um, I think there's, you know, there's there's a little bit room for improvement still, and I'll show you too, like, we build into it as best we can um, as far as doing damage with flooding and torpedoes and things like that, but, yeah, so going through these guys, like, is working great, like, you know, I'm just, <laughs> just looking around my ship firing torpedoes every which way I can at whatever enemy, and it, it worked pretty good. Um, a lot of times with these defend missions, I, I like to have sort of, like, more area effect or status effect type type weapons you know like you know you go in with your sand book and you can set a whole bunch of ships on fire all at once it's like super helpful but here just the raw damage um was working pretty good yeah you can see we're doing a lot of damage from ramming too so this ship does have some additional perks as far that are centered around ramming um and you know ramming can cause like flooding as well and all that other fun stuff too and you can do more damage if you ram a target that's flooded also um, but I don't build too much into the sort of ramming perks uh, with this one just because, you know, it's fun to do the ram, but, like, that always takes some, like, setup, right? And sometimes, you, like, if it's a fast-moving enemy, like, you're going to miss them here and there, right? So I just felt like I'm using the torpedoes more than I'm ramming people, so I, I wanted to build more into the, the torpedoes. But I'll show you some sort of optional furniture pieces if you're interested in and going full on ramming, right? Because <laughs> it's it's there, it's a thing. Um, like people are doing sort of those like mean builds for like ramming. It works pretty good. Um, the uh, the small variant of this ship is also really good for um, doing ramming builds as well. I've been playing around with that also and trying to get that ship fully upgraded too. But yeah, this the defend missions. I'll be honest, with you, this was fun to do this uh, mission with the torpedo build. Um, yeah, you can see like we just kind of. 
you know, people are taking pretty heavy hits, like it's working pretty good. I think part of it might be to the, the like ship type, like these DMC guys just might be a little bit more vulnerable to um, like flooding and flood damage than some of the other ones. So I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about too, but you'll see it with like boss fights and then I'll do a convoy for a little bit as well. And it just didn't feel like I was getting the same effect of like, you know, just raw damage out of, you know, some of those convoy fights that I, that I was getting here, right? So, and it may be, um, yeah, so here's a rogue hunt, right? Like, and these guys go down crazy quick, right? But of course, they are only level 10. But yeah, you can see just a couple of volleys before this guy even gets a chance to attack us and, and he's done for, right? So, but yeah, like, th like this works on all sorts of stuff like this, but... I think there's some enemy types and areas where it's, it's a little more challenging. It doesn't feel as powerful as this. Um, so I think that's where I'm like, I'm not sold on it for some of those more difficult um, game activities, right? Um, but yeah, I think that one thing this game like it could do a little bit better is, you know, when you do a certain type of damage, you know, to an enemy, like, you know, say we're doing flooding damage, that those numbers could pop up in a like, in like blue or something you know to show like just how much you know how effective that particular weapon type is i'm thinking like i'm a big fan of like the borderlands franchise and if you're using like the wrong type of ammo like it'll show like resist or something like that but here is the build right so we're using the brigantine and if you look over on the right the bullhorn perk here increased damage from ramming gain additional speed while pursuing an enemy ship within 30 300 meters and then here's the tricky one right increases flooding weapon damage by 20 percent and deals 20 percent more weapon damage to flooded targets so that's what i'm trying to capitalize on and build into is that perk right there i'm going to show you kind of what I'm talking about here too. I am using Endless Requiem, so these are, you know, these are the fancy torpedoes from Season 2, um, but they have, you know, they're not the strongest, but they have this homing perk, which kind of, you know, homes in on the targets, and I feel like I just get more out of them just because I'm getting more hits because I have that little bit of homing that's helping out there, but they are not the strongest, right? So if you're really, really good and confident with torpedoes, you could pick Heavenly Lance. These are new this season. Um, and they also, they so they deal more base damage and they also deal some electric damage. They do a little bit less flooding on the flooding damage side though. So that's where there's a little bit of trade-off. And of course they don't home. If you want the most bang, I would say it's probably Rama's Legacy. These do, these are kind of the, the heaviest hitters I would say. And then they have this cataclysmic perk where if you're getting multiple hits, it's increasing the amount of damage. And then it also is flooding three as opposed to flooding two. So you can see like those are quite a bit better, right? So Endless Requiem, since they're from the last season, you'll have to, you know, check the uh, like cycle stock on like the black market and um, William Blackwood and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure if you can, I can't remember if you can craft those just yet or not, but yeah, like check the codex as always, right? And then yeah, I'm using Crouching Tiger for my aux weapon right now. Um, I would say, um, you know, the, and the biggest reason I'm doing that is for the taunting effect, right? So I want to, I want that damage nerf from enemies. Um, but Leopold 3 is a really good choice. I think that's what I was using when I was playing the defend mission, just because of how much more flooding damage it, it triggers. Um, so that's kind of why... You know, I would I would recommend that one. I think some of the like the the standard spring loader weapons, those like mine layers, those also do some uh, uh, trigger some flooding. I think I can't remember. Um, armor piece doesn't really matter too much here. Um, you guys know I'm a fan of the Black Prince. Um, I do go and fight La Pest with this build, and it actually works really well. So I did put the Wailing Ward on. So if you're gonna do La Pest, but yeah, the torpedo build does work pretty good for. Um, La Pest, um, Storm Open Symphony, man. Rhapsody of the Deep's a good one if you're fighting the Hubak twins, and that's how you're going to get some of the um, furniture pieces that will show. So that's always a good idea as well. Ouroboros, I think this this one. I always say this in my videos <laughs> from this season. It's making a comeback, right? Um, this one's just super super nice, just because you get the um, the restoration of severe damage. Um, where so if you're not in a ship that triggers, you know, that can get rid of severe damage, that that's a good way to go. For the major furniture piece, I'm using munition, Munitions Mixer, right? Increases duration of the flooded and ablaze effects supplied to enemy ships by 100%. So it's doubling how long um, the flooded effect lasts. 
it does reduce the damage from that effect, but I don't care about that because the reason we want them to flood longer is because of this bullhorn perk, the second part where it says flooding weapon damage by 20% and deals 20% more weapon damage to flooded targets. So we're capitalizing on that, right? We want them flooded and then we're going to do more damage to them when we hit them with our torpedoes while they are flooded. That's the whole point of that combination there. Density Furnace, this is a really, really good one for this build. Increases the charge rate of flooded effect and increases the duration of the flooded effect. I think you get the blueprint for that from Rama in um, the East Indies. Tuning Station, this is a must for a torpedo build, right? Increase secondary damage of torpedo by 17%. That's the, the flooding uh, damage. Increases the projectile speed, right? And then Hubach Tuning Rack, increase maximum range of torpedo by 12% and reduces arming distance of the torpedo weapons. That's where you get that little, little bit of extra damage um, when once the torpedoes arm, and then a little bit more speed as well there. Um, beam supports, just for the extra health. Torpedo works, one. This is one that's just craftable, um, right? From the Carpenter, increases the uh, uh, basically the flooding damage by another 19%. Um, some other good choices would be emergency sales. So this one, I think if you're going for ramming, right, this would help give you some extra speed as you're going in for the ram, right? <coughs> Excuse me. But I think that'd be a good good choice there. Uh, lead kettle one, right, this is just increases duration of flooded effect, right? So if you don't have some of those other ones, these would maybe be some other good options. Um, and then there is one in here, yeah, this iron cladding station one, increased damage from ramming by 25%. So that's probably a must if you're going full on ram damage, right? But yeah, those those unique torpedo furniture items, I think you get those from like the Hubak twins and stuff like that. Um, side note, I think as an alternate from torpedoes, I would, I honestly would prefer a thousand year monsoon. So if comparing them to endless requiem, like more damage, more range, faster fire rate, Right, like the only thing that the torpedoes have over these is the reload speed. So you'd be able to send quite a few more. And then, so, you know, you'd be able to capitalize just how we are here with the flooding effects, you know, that you, the flooding perks that you get from the Brigantine, um, but then also have all these extra perks that you get from these thousand year monsoons, like creating severe damage, right? So like, I think like, honestly, like if I'm gonna do a, a Brigantine build and build into the flooding, I'm probably going to use Thousand Year Monsoons over Torpedoes, but we are demoing the Torpedoes, right? So I'm just letting you know, like, it's it's not the best, right? Like, at least in my opinion, I don't have the greatest success with Torpedoes, right? So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Endless Requiem is my choice for Torpedoes, just because I feel like I, I land more hits because you get that little bit of homing, right? You still have to do most of the aiming work right but like yeah like it, the the little bit of homing that they do you know especially for a target that's like headed straight away from you or headed straight towards you right the homing will like you know you're sh you launch four from each side of your ship right the home the little extra homing allows like all four of them to hit that target head on right if you've aimed it right so I think just like being able to land more hits has been more valuable than having the stronger torpedoes in which case you would miss some of them right so yeah, you can see we do decent damage there. This is the opulent opportunity, right? This is always a good convoy to do. Um, and, you know, we do some chunky damage here between the mortar and the torpedoes, especially if one of the targets, especially if these guys are flooded. Um, and I didn't call for help, right? I'm trying to do this on my own just to kind of gauge how well I, I like the torpedoes, right? But we get a little overwhelmed by some of the, uh, like, the guards or the uh, escorts from this uh, convoy just constantly using their flamethrowers on us. But this was one where I was just like, it didn't feel like I was doing anywhere near the same amount of damage. You know, especially to the, you know, I, I get that the convoy, like the main guys that you're going after and targeting, I get that they're a little bit more tanky, but some of these, like these ads, right, like these escort guys, like just didn't, they didn't feel like they were going down anywhere near as quick as those DMC guys from the defend fight, right? So I was just like, you know, like maybe there's some sort of armor difference or maybe they just have a bigger health pool or whatever. But yeah, like, so this is where I was like, man, like any of my other build, right? My, like my explosive builds that I've done or like my sand book, especially right with this, just a full on fire build works so much better for these convoys um, than this like torpedo build, right? So I was like a little bit disappointed. I was kind of hoping that this would work good here too. And it just kind of doesn't. 
Um, like, it works. Like, you can get it done, right? Like, it's like anything else, right? right? Like, level 16 boss in the beginning, we were making progress killing her, right? Like, so it's totally, totally doable, right? Um, and then uh, we went and fought La Pest, and actually does work pretty good against La Pest. So I got to give it uh, credit here. Credit where credit is due, right? So just make sure you equip your Wailing Ward, and then I think the rest of my build was the same when I, you know, I think that's the only thing I changed was the armor piece. That is a little more... Um, you know, linked to fighting La Paz too, and we even got like the, he's in like the storm this, you know, the the day I fought him, right? Uh, but yeah, this is a level 13 variant, right? So it's nothing crazy, but he's still difficult to do, um, you know, to fight him solo on your own, so to speak, right? And so, but yeah, the, the speed definitely helps with La Paz because he's got these, you know, otherwise he's just so good with those high flying mortar attacks like he's like just always precise with those so the speed helps you know the speed of the brigantine helps quite a bit there but yeah you can see we're doing like we're getting good chunky damage uh done from him so we'll we'll do this fight for a little bit here and then yeah of course he what's nice about him is he has several attacks where he just sits in one place so even if you didn't have endless requiem torpedoes right like it, and like i said like if you don't you don't know where any of these items were right like check the codex right like because like it's tough for me to remember where every single thing comes from especially if i've had it for a while um but yeah like i know endless requiem like those they're out there check the like cycle stock of like you know the black market and and william blackwood and <clears throat> you know check the codex to see if you can buy the blueprint for him somewhere right um or it may even like drop from the hubak guys i don't know i should probably stop talking about that probably wrong there <laughs> Yeah, we've got him down to half already, right? Like, so, like, it's working really, really great. And then, yeah, he's um, flooded for quite a good amount of time, too. We're getting uh, some decent hits on him while he's flooded here. So that's why we built into that, right? Try and get the target to be in the flooded state for longer. That's super, super helpful. <clears throat> but, yeah, to finish off this video, we will fight Commander Zhang. Right, so this is the lower level of him, right? He's a he's a tier or he's a level eight ship, right? But he's pretty tanky. He's got a good chunk of a health pool, but you can see how quickly the torpedoes work through him. So they work good on him, but yeah, like the level sixteen boss for this season, like it works, but it it feels like it's a slow and steady wins the race kind of situation fighting her with these. So, um, but yeah, torpedoes work well for uh, this guy though. So we'll we'll take advantage of that. <laughs> And then, yeah, we almost have him flooded already. I think that's probably part of the challenge with this, right? So, like, if you're doing those, like, convoys, right, and some of those ships are a little bit more re resistant to those status effects, right? Like, it takes a few more hits to get them into that flooded state. Um, but you can see if you pay close attention, right, you can see the torpedoes are doing a little bit more damage while he's flooded versus when we hit him when he's not in the flooded state. Um, so that that's kind of where it you know where it shines right yeah we've already got him down to half so we'll finish off this fight um, and then that's going to be our video for the day on the torpedo build right so if you guys are interested in seeing any other unique builds or any ships in particular maxed out and or how I would build those ships out right those are kind of the fun things that I like to do in skull and bones is, is tinker around with stuff like this um, but yeah like torpedo ones have always been like the challenge to me because I've always felt like they're just still even building into them as much as we could right like I feel like they're still a little underpowered in some scenarios they work great for some scenarios but a little underpowered in some others so um, we will continue to play with it but yeah let me know down in the comments what you guys think or if there's any other any other things I I missed or maybe could have done better with this build let me know and then uh, yeah anything you're willing you want to see from me uh, put that in the comments as well and as always, make sure you are following the channel. I am doing more Skull and Bones videos uh, in the future here, so stay tuned for those, and we'll see you next time.